Hi, Aya. This is for you. I'm going to explain how you write children's books because maybe someday you or some of your friends and relatives might want to write a book for children. What you need to do is to have a proverb and the proverb can be from your favorite book or favorite quotation and you can have humor by asking kids what makes them laugh. So you can go visit children and, or ask your students in school what makes you laugh. That's one way to start writing a children's book is to expand on a proverb and use humor. You can use rhyme, but most children's books uh, don't have rhyme in them. But if you're good at rhyming, you can use limericks and rhymes to create children's books, from picture books for very young children to story books. Children's books can be either fiction or nonfiction. And you can emphasize a subject such as uh, eating healthy vegetables and fruits, or you can uh, build up the minds and bodies of people in a book by showing how they use their wits about them to solve problems. And the problems that they solve can be something that others could find easy to follow. So you can use universal examples, which means that you can use examples of what everybody goes through, such as the stages of life. You need to connect with schools and maybe uh, talk to students in your school or if you want to be invited to speak in a library, in a conference room, you can set that up also or speak to classrooms. One of the best ways to write children's books using proverbs or humor is to write poems or song lyrics and then you turn your song lyrics into actual children's stories. You can um, gather other people and create a panel of speakers so that other people can speak about their experiences writing children's books on these panels and help the audience in a library or a classroom to learn how to write children's books. What you could also do is help other people to work with their PTA or Parent Teachers Association so that parents and children can work together and design a children's book. Someone would do the illustration or photography. Someone will create textures for younger children so they can actually touch different textures of fabric. And someone else will write the storylines, which can come from a poem. So basically, you can turn your original poems and your original song lyrics into children's books. Remember that the characters in your story will react to the other person's body language and gestures. And the gestures are called taglines because they explain how the emotions are going in the character of the story. That's all called a tagline, such as he took a sudden interest in his shoes would characterize someone's emotions perhaps of being shy and looking down at their shoes instead of answering. So those are called taglines because they explain the behavior and the emotions where words would not really give an illustration or a picture of what the person is feeling in the story. First, you might want to select a poem that you wrote to turn into a story for a children's book. The children's book could be 32 pages. It could feature illustrations and perhaps be for a young child up to the age of five. And you can make collages where you take textures of fabric and stuff the fabric so that the child can actually touch something that's pasted in the book, like an image of an animal, and then underneath that you would have one line explaining what that animal is thinking or doing. And that's a type of book that's made up of gestures and all types of information.
that's in the book. But basically, if you're using a poem to write a children's book, the poem should tell a story in several lines. You can use a 10-line poem or any length poem that would make up a 32-page children's book or a 22-page book for very young children that would use mostly pictures and maybe a one line of text or two lines of text at the bottom of the picture. Let's take words. The words in a book for very young children are taking second place to illustration. And when you're writing a book for children up to the age of four, the words will not outnumber the pictures. But when you're writing a book for children age nine to 12, the words will outnumber the pictures. And for children aged four to eight, about two thirds of the page will be pictures and one or two paragraphs will be words. Decide first whether you want to write a picture book or a story book. Then use the images in your poem. And you can use proverbs from your favorite books. You can use quotations. You can use your own original song lyrics. And you can use folklore tales, traditional tales that have been passed from generation to generation. You can turn it into a radio play. But a book that emphasizes words over pictures can be adapted to an audio book, or you can make a radio play or an audio play by having a narrator. Now, what you want to do is to take a poem and turn it into a children's storybook by using concrete ideas that young children would understand by looking at pictures and then looking at words at the bottom of the page. Start with an inspirational poem or song lyrics. The idea that you can make something out of nothing is very interesting because you have a, a storybook entirely written about someone who makes something out of nothing. For example, could a story be something out of nothing? The idea behind it is that you can make a story out of anything intangible. And if it's intangible, that means you can't touch it or put your hand around it. It's not a tangible item like a washing machine. It's a thought. A thought of imagination or an image is something intangible. An idea is something intangible. So you can take something such as an idea for a story, which is an intangible, and write a plan about how you're going to write something that comes out of nothing, or a tangible story that comes out of an intangible abstract idea. It can be an oral history. It can be a folk tale. It can be a story that comes from nothing that you can put a handle on. What you could do, for example, is capture your dreams. When you capture your dreams and turn them into a story or a poem or a picture, you're creating something out of nothing, where nothing would be defined as something intangible. So it's not really nothing. It's just an intangible dream or an idea that's an image or a picture in your mind that you can't really touch until you create a story or a picture that you can touch. What children want in a story actually is a cave. And it's a type of cave that emphasizes folklore or a poem or tradition or a proverb. And it's a cave where children can go into to be themselves. That's what children want in a storybook for very young children, a cave that they can go into to be themselves. Because when you're reading a story, you have to suspend belief. You still want to be yourself as you read the story, but you want to navigate fantasy, just like a pilot navigates a plane or a ship. The storybook becomes a den because a, a den is like a cave. 
or it could be a tree house. It's a place where children go to be themselves. And it's a place where children go to be not only themselves, but to go inside in their minds and shut the door and play. That's the whole idea of reading is to play when it comes to storybooks. So you can introduce children to poetry. 